Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. It's been a really long time since I did my last video. I've just been really, really busy. Been doing a lot of real estate videos and photography, so it's been a lot of fun, but I just haven't had a lot of time to do uh, anything for YouTube, unfortunately. But uh, a while ago, a company reached out to me and asked me if I'd do a review on their product. Um, so just before we get started, um, I wasn't paid to do the review, but they have sent me out this product for free. Um, to do the review, but it's not going to bias my review anyway at all. I'm going to be 100% upfront and honest about what I think about it. So what it is, it's a handheld gimbal stabilizer, so pretty much like a glide cam or a steady cam. Um, it's called a, here's a manual here. It's called a Flowcam 2000 and it's by Cam Gear, a company called Cam Gear. I think they're out of uh, India. So this is a little instruction manual you get with it. And this is the beautiful case that it comes in right here. So what I'm going to do now is just open it up. We'll get a close-up look of what you get inside it. Um, then I'm going to give you some sample footage. I'm going to use the GH4 on it. Uh, probably going to use the lens that's on the camera right now, which is the Olympus 7 to 14 millimeter, uh, which is what I've been using for a lot of real estate. Obviously, it's nice and wide. Actually, maybe I'll talk about the pricing really quickly. Uh, it's around 100 US dollars. So some websites are a bit over, some websites are a bit under. Uh, Amazon, for some reason, is a bit cheaper, but I don't know if that's because they add the shipping later or something like that. Uh, on the Cam Gear website, um, I think it's around 107 US dollars. So it's pretty damn cheap. My my other little glide cam thing that I have is a really cheap ripoff on eBay. It worked really well though. That was about 200 and something, 250 dollars or something like that. So um, it is pretty cheap, and this will carry a camera up to six pounds, which is almost three kilograms, which is it's pretty heavy. It's more than enough for the GH4. Uh, with the lens on it and things like that. So yeah, uh, let's open it up and we'll have a look at what's inside. All right, so as I said before, you do receive a instruction, a printed instruction manual, um, just like this. Sorry, it might be a little bit overexposed because of the lights above me, but you do get a manual. I'm sure you can also get that on the internet, so you don't actually need the printed copy, but let's get a look at the actual unit itself. So it comes in this really, really nice bag. I actually really like the bag. Um, it's got carry handles, yeah, it's really nice. So let's get that open. It's a nice protective material on top there. Um, so first thing I'll take out is this right here. So this here is the actual the handle. This bit's the actual gimbal. Um, and then you've got the actual the pole as well. So let's keep looking at what's in here. Uh, here we look like we have the part where you mount the camera. So there's plenty of mounting options here. It slides back and forth and side to side as well to balance it. Um, I'll, as with everything I use, I use a quick release plate. So I'll be mounting my quick release plate on here um, for when I do my little test. And obviously this mounts to the pole, something like that, which we'll sort out a bit later. I'll put, put it together after we do the unboxing. Uh, then we get a whole bunch of, um, like a screwdriver, a whole bunch of little fittings. So I'm guessing that's just screws, maybe some spare screws, maybe to screw your camera on and things like that. And then this part, here's the bottom of it, which I think you call the sled. I can't remember if the sled's the bottom or the top, but anyway, here's the part that's at the very bottom. And what I will note is you get a whole bunch of weights, which is really, really good. Um, so you can balance heavier setups pretty well. Um, what you wanna do when you're setting these up is try and make the bottom weigh as much as the top. So if your camera and camera combo and everything on top weighs about two kilos or one and a half kilos, whatever it is, then you wanna try and get the same weight on the bottom. All right, so now I'm gonna put it all back together. I just noticed how white I am in the screen, so don't worry about that. It's uh, finally getting some nice weather here, so I'm in a singlet, but I'm white, really white. Anyway, so I'm gonna put this thing together. I'm not gonna show you any crazy close-ups or anything like that, because it is pretty simple from what I can see. And like I said, it does come with the instruction manual, so that'll be a help. Anyway, you get this little screwdriver. I'm not sure if you actually need it and you get an allen key as well which i can already see we'll be using so let's just uh as i said here this is the this is the gimbal part here in the pole the bottom part with the weights obviously goes on the bottom and the sled where your camera goes will go on the top there so first thing i'm going to do is mount it to the bottom it looks like there's a thread on the bottom of this and it looks like it just screws onto the part with the weights so we'll just screw it on make sure it's nice and tight all right, that's on there. So that's what it should look like. And then we're gonna put the top on. So that's this one. Um, it looks like the screws of this definitely have to come out. So we'll pull them out. Just be careful because there's these little washers that look like they'll be easy to use, uh, lose. Once this is together, you'll never have to take it apart again unless you wanna put it back in the case. Um, but 
usually with these kind of things, once they're set up and balanced, you don't really get them back in the case easily, so um, I just leave them out of the cases. Right, so this part, we just sit on top, then you will line up the holes, just there. And then we can put the screws and the washers back in. So these are just Allen keys, this will hold the top part on where your camera will sit. I'll put them in loosely just so all the holes line up and then we'll tighten them up once it's all looking good. Also guys, this is something that I might consider doing a giveaway with because <clears throat> I do already have one um, and I don't really use them that often because I do have um, the Zion Crane, which is the electronic gimbal. It's kind of smaller than this, it's a bit easier to use, but there are times where I do use my, um, my glide cam copy still, but um, I, don't, I don't need two of them, so I might give away this one or my other one. Um, so if that's something that interests you guys, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a giveaway. Make sure all this stuff's nice and tight. You don't want your camera falling off or anything like that. All right, so that's it all together. Then what you want to do, we're going to be removing this, the top part, so we can mount our camera underneath. So you unscrew all of these. Again, there's washers, so just be careful you don't lose those. Once these are all unscrewed, you'll be able to mount your camera from underneath. So there'll be a screw that goes from underneath, which I'll show you in a second. I need to go and get my quick release mount as well. You can mount your camera directly to this, but I always use a quick release mount so that I can just move um, my camera from device to device. Another reason you want a quick release mount on this is because the process to get the camera on and off is pretty long. And if you want to swap between devices, you don't want to pull this off, unscrew it, um, it's best to just have a quick release mount on this plate at all times and you just bang on and off with your camera. So that's what that plate looks like. So we're going to be putting our screw underneath through to our camera which will sit on top or our camera mount. So what I'm going to do now is grab my camera mount. First we're going to look for a screw. They give you a couple screws in here. I think this one here, if you can see it, I think that's the one we're going to be using to mount our quick release plate. Yep, just screws up through there. Now you can mount this in any of these holes you want. Remember this does slide back and forth and side to side, so you don't need to get it perfect, but if you've got a really front heavy setup, this might be slid all the way back and it might not look that nice or whatever, so you might want to um, mount your camera further back or forward or something so the plate's in a nicer position. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is get my quick release plate, mount that on there, and um, yeah, we'll see what it looks like. All right, I'm back, I've got my quick release plate. This is the Manfrotto. I can't remember the actual model number, but I love these. Um, they're not cheap, but they're extremely heavy duty and just the satisfying click when your camera goes on and off these is awesome. So we're going to screw this onto our plate. Remember the plate sits something like that. So the plate, uh, the quick release plate for me is going to sit this way, just like that. All your plates are going to be different to mine or if unless you've got the same one, but we're going to screw that on now. The problem is the camera I'm going to be using on this is the camera that's filming me now. So I might just swap cameras um, just to show you what it looks like with the camera on it. And we might do a quick balancing, um, quick balancing tutorial, not a tutorial, but just see how well it balances, how quick it's, it is to set up and things like that. Like I said, the only problem is I'm gonna have to change cameras. The other camera doesn't have an intern, uh, external microphone. So the sound might not be as good and I can't be bothered recording externally. So yeah, let me just get this screwed on nice and tight. I'll flip to my other camera and I'll show you what it looks like with the camera mounted and everything ready to go. All right, so as you can probably tell by the audio, I have switched cameras. Here it is, the GH4 with the Olympus 7 to 14 millimeter lens on top. And uh, here it is. Looks pretty nice. Bit of a close up. There's the weights on the bottom. There's that nice sticker thing I was telling you about, Flowcam 2000 by Camgear. And now what I'm going to do is try and give it a balance and see how we go. We're balanced, so that was very quick, I've got to admit. Now what I'm going to do is just give you a close-up of what this all looks like set up, and then we're going to show you some sample footage uh, using the Flowcam 2000, and then I'm going to tell you my final thoughts. setting it up, got some final thoughts. It is pretty easy to set up. Um, my other one is a little bit faster, but I like the way the weights come on and off this one. So it seems to be pretty well balanced. Our drop time's pretty good, could be a little bit slower, so I could potentially take off another weight, 
or we could move this gimbal um, down a bit lower, but I'm not going to do that. I think it's pretty well, pretty well stabilized enough to get some video. As you can see, when I move it side to side, it's moving a little bit, but it's staying pretty steady like that. So, you know, when you walk with the glide cam like this, so I think it's going to stay pretty steady. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to show you some sample footage um, that's going to be shot on the GH4, exactly as the way this is set up now. And um, then I'll take my final thoughts and that'll be it. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed the sample footage. Um, one thing I will say, I'm not an expert at using a glide cam. I've used them before quite a few times, but I'm, I'm not a master at it. I've got the Zion Crane, which does all that stuff for you. Once you balance it, pretty much, you've still got to be steady and still, still pretty hard to use smoothly, but these are even harder. So um, don't judge that footage too much, because like I said, I'm not a master at using the glide cam or steady cam or flow cam. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to tell you my thoughts. So first of all, I think the build quality is really, really nice. Um, like I said a few times during my setup, it does take a little bit longer to set up than my other uh, eBay copy. Um, like instead of with the weights, there's just easier screws. With uh, the uh, back and forth mo uh, back and forth movement and side to side movement, it is just one lever, um, which is good and bad. I mean, that lever does come loose quite often, whereas this has four, so even if one comes loose, you're still held on tight by another three. Um, and like I said, I think the genuine glide cam actually does have uh, does have four bolts for each as well. Um, the gimbal moves very nice and smoothly. It's really nice, so, you know, it's just awesome. So I thought it was pretty easy to balance, really easy to add and remove weights. You do get a ton of weights, which is really nice. These are all the weights that I took off. So, quite a few weights taken off, which means now the gimbal weighs a lot less. And I probably could have even taken one more of the big weights off, but I figured I'd leave it on there. So I've only got uh, four big weights left on the bottom of either side. So there's eight weights in total. Um, so I love that you get some of these spares and things like that. I love the case that it comes in. Like I said, probably won't go back in there ever again because it's not going to fit in there set up like this um, unless I take it all back apart, which I can't be bothered because once I've set them up, um, I know that I'll still need to tweak it probably every time I use it, just make sure everything's you know the same. Um, but I'm not going to strip it all down and put it back in the case, which kind of sucks, but that's just the way it is. Um, the instructions, I didn't really read them because I kind of know how these already work, but they do look pretty easy to understand. Um, it tells you how to balance it and everything, which I really, really like. Um, this is my quick release on top. So that's why I like using them because now I can just throw this camera on a tripod or something else and it's good to go. This never moves, um, so you don't have to screw your camera in and balance it every single time because the plate never moves. Slap it straight back on and we're still balanced and good to go. Now, over time, things are gonna move, obviously. You know, bolts are gonna get loose, so make sure you keep them all tight and rebalance. Every time you use it, just make sure it's in balance and do anything you need to do to rebalance it. Um, so that's it, I'm really, really happy with it. If, would I buy this? 100% yes. I do think it is better than the other one I did buy and the other one was more than double the price. Um, so I would buy this. As I said, a little bit harder to set up, but I think that process is worth it because the result is, is much better than my other one. So yeah, I think that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really happy with it. I highly recommend it. If you're looking for a much cheaper, you know, glide cam option, that's it there, the Flow Cam 2000 by Cam Gear. You can buy it in quite a few different places. It's on Amazon, it's on their website, it's on eBay. Um, the company is in India, so I think they all ship from India. Um, but if, even with shipping, it's still very cheap. Like I said, this one's about 107 on their website. That's US dollars, so not sure what that is in Australian dollars. But um, yeah, I'm extremely happy with the price. The other one, like I said, it cost me more than double, and this one seems to just be a bit nicer quality-wise. Um, I think they're way about the same, but yeah. That's it, hope you enjoyed. I love it, hope you enjoyed the sample footage. Uh, if you've got any questions about it at all, let me know. Let me know if you want maybe for me to give this away or give my other one away, because um, I don't need to, so. 
Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you all soon. Thanks very much for watching. Peace out.